Hello, my name is Yaya. This is um, a short and a quick demonstration how to do a frequency assignment of a new microwave link um, using an ECMA database and also following ECMA rules for the C2I protection ratios. So let's make it simple. This is the new link I have. It's 11 gigahertz running from that side to that side. We've got the power, antenna height, bandwidth, and the antenna type. So step number one is you need to model this new link in order to do the coordination. So I'm going to switch to microwave mode, drop any two points, doesn't matter where, and jump to the site. Now in the site, right away, you copy the site ID. Now you don't have to know the site if you know the coordinates, but it's a lot easier if you have the site address or, or if you have the site um, ID. Update the file. The file is already linked, so you just need to hit update. Update the first link, update the second link. Now we have the address of, of the site number one and also site number two. Jump to the um, antenna pattern now, select the uh, antenna A, RPE, select the antenna. So we're going to go to, um, we're going to Andrew, and this is the, lit, this is the, mic, the microwave um, antenna. So we can do it quickly like this, select the second part as well, and that's it. Now it should be a right. Oops, I did not select. So I select it, orient the two antennas together. Now it looks like they're still in the same location, that's because I did not update properly. So copy this, put it here, copy this, put it there. Hit update. So this one updated. So I'll do the second one. This is updated. Now I have the antenna pattern oriented. Oriented. Yeah, beautiful. So the antenna is correct, and the site is correct. Now I just need to do the configuration for the technical parameters. Now technical parameters, I can if you know the equipment. Um, you can go and select the equipment itself, um, and that will save you a lot of time. Okay, if you don't, and then you have to put the parameters in. So the address came from the from the from the site. It's a bi-directional link. This is a new link, a brand new link. So put new. And uh, right now, um, I can also select the channel or band plan, so I can easily select the frequency. I don't have to bother myself. So done. It will take care of both ends. And now for the for the antenna height, so antenna height is. Uh, is 27 and 37 so you make sure you put the the numbers in properly and then again don't you don't need to worry about it because this is coming from the rpe and you just need to do the power now 28 on this end and the second end now we have microwave link and it's a 40 meg so you put 40 meg and it doesn't matter if you put uh, if you put this information or not um for the for the throughput KTPF, um, you can um, calculate it, or or you can um, you can calculate autom automatically using using the calculator here. You will update it as well. So we have the technical information, we have the antenna pattern, we have the sites, you have everything you need. Hit OK. Now this this is your new microwave link running from this point to this point. So I'm going to quickly investigate, see if this link is um, healthy. Uh, run, run profile. Yeah, there's no obstruction. I can see the digital terrain model. I can see the clutter. I can see it's green here, which um, the path reliability, which is 99.9999. So it's exceeding the requirement actually. So looking good already. So we have this new microwave link. This is not enough. We need to invite in the, the rest of the network. So in Australia, lucky we have access to the um, online database which means um, I can invite in uh, the rest of the network. I can, I can I could have done it using a radius uh, and um, and um, and um, coordination distance and then I can I can uh, invite in the rest of the network. So this is this is the the, the coordination area I'm going to um, use. you could make it bigger, smaller up to you depending on the requirement. So click click, then you go to RL data access, you hit OK, and now, that should take you to the plugin. Now that plugin is extremely simple. All you have to do, make sure it's in microwave mode and make sure you select the right band.
if you don't find your band here it doesn't matter just send us an email or just type in your frequency range that will also do so this is my microwave band and now run the query you run the query and now it will run the geographical filter and the frequency filter and extract for you the for you the records these are all the links that you have roughly 628 links divide by two if if it's bi-directional you can see here the database of the uh, date the, the date is um, is december uh, 1st which is up to date which is up to date so uh, this is this is good now all you have to do is to add to map done and now you watch you can watch the the, the um, microwave network being imported into the software the software will take care of translating all the different uh, parameters and model it properly in this in the tool such as the power the antenna rpe um, uh, model number it would take care of the um, orientation it would take care of the um, polarization it would take care of the height and everything so that would be um, good to go now this can take um, up to two three minutes depending on the number of microwave links um, right now the software is not really downloading it's just loading your network from the disk it takes time because the tool has to have to inspect inspect every link and validate the parameters so this is the process so once all the microwave links are on the map you can run a coordination process you can do interference investigation you can do automatic frequency assignment and you can use that new frequency so i'm going to pause the the um the recording for now and we will um we will watch for the um the the the, the duration now it's almost done um it's been running for two minutes here we go done this is error log it will get, it will tell you what microwave links are um, um do not have a matching RPE antenna model in the database and in that case the software will assume an ITU generic model which is typically used for coordination purposes so this is the rest of the of the network on that band now you could have actually imported multiple bands if you're doing coordination between multiple bands as well you could have done so and um, this is the microwave network now go and check this microwave list so you see now we have heaps of other microwave links now you can go on and do sanity checks just to make sure everything is working yeah these microwave links are in our um, model properly so you can check a couple of them oh, this is just cleared enough uh, same here now I'm going to check some of the parameters as well so I'm going to choose one of these microwaves and then uh, go and check the parameters to show you as well what kind of information has been imported from the online database so you can see the address you can see the antenna type is here you can see the frequency being used the antenna height on both ends and the antenna gain the transmission power and the bandwidth of course now for the for the um, for the KTPF the KTPF has been calculated based on the bandwidth and uh, and, and also assuming um, uh, roughly six six to be noise degradation and um, here the pattern you can see the pattern oh yes that's good the the actual antenna pattern has been also uh, loaded so this is this will make very accurate uh, uh, modeling some of the microwave links um, 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 with the with the with incorrect um, RPE code or non-matching RPE code, they will end up using ITU R F six nine nine dash four, which is generic antenna modeling for coordination purposes. So this is the site. You can see the site ID. You can see um, the license number. You can see the the address and the antenna antenna type or antenna um, RPE code. So all the information are in place, which is beautiful. Now the next step, I want to do frequency assignment. To make it really simple so what you need to do click on that new microwave link right click and then go to the check frequency list check frequency list of this microwave link against everything on the map so when you click this function now um, all you have to do you need to um, um, select what frequency range you are looking at and you can select up 
only high or only low frequencies up to you this is low this is high this is a frequency plan uh, pre-generated um, you can also use the plugin to to produce such um, such a frequency plan select now we've got all the channels in place all you have to do now is to check the irf now the irf here is the interference rejection factor which is derived from the protection ratio CTIs. The CTIs are embedded in the tables in, in, in software. You don't need to, you don't need to define them manually. Of course you could, but there's no 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 need. The whole idea is to automate the process. And they already implement uh, ETSI, ITU, IEEE, and also ACMA rules. And uh, and and uh, and this is the XPD. It's in case the antenna doesn't have XPD value, uh, we can define the XPD here globally. So you hit OK. And now we hit OK, and the software will run the calculations for um, the interference and coordination for every frequency. So the idea is to do batch investigation for the number of interference cases um, um, for every for every potential channel in the band. So you can see this is also going to take probably up to 35, 60 seconds. It should take around one minute. And uh, once it's finished, um, we will be able to see the frequencies um, uh, most appropriate for that new link. The, the frequency assignment process is, um, is taking into account incoming and outgoing interference. So you would check for every frequency, what is the impact on the network and what's the impact of the network on the existing link. Almost done. So it's roughly one minute. Finished. Done. So this is a quick report. Now the pink generally, generally means interference and the blue here means safe. And um, you can see here, if you to use the first channel or the first frequency, you will get two cases of, of interference. If you use the second one, you will get one. If you use the third one, you will get zero or no interference. Some of them have four cases of, of interference and five. So the first, the first few or the, the first few frequencies are actually transmit um, transmit low. Now the rest are transmit high. So you can you can go and select um, um, the, the safe frequency for assignment. So I'm going to use this frequency because it has no interference. Assign it. That will assign it to the microwave link. If you wish to do further investigation, you just have to go select in order to do C2I investigation. So now the frequency has been selected. There's no interference cases. And here, do you see any pink? Mm. No. Pink usually means interference, but still need to investigate and check the C2Is. You don't have to do it like this manually, but that just to give you an idea. So this is the link I have from here to here, the blue, the blue uh, bubbles here. You have your wanted link, this is your unwanted link. So you can see the wanted link uh, from, from here, from the bottom to the top is delivering link 28 dBm and the interference from the far east uh, down to the to the to the to the first terminal here. The, the top bubble it's delivering neg 28 neg neg 208 dBm. That's very low. So the C2I is massive and and it will give you really good protection. So software is doing this in batch for every link, incoming and outgoing interference. And in fact, if you wish to have the full report, you can just go report and that's where you can actually go and filter on the C2I. If you find anything below, for example, 65, which is typically the, the, the core channel protection, then you know you have a violation or you have a case of interference. So this is here the link. So the frequency is done, it's assigned. Now you can go and click on the, on the parameters of this microwave link and you can now have, um, or you can, you can see the new frequency being assigned. So that's it. It's actually very simple to go and do a frequency assignment for a new microwave link. Uh, this is a short demonstration. Probably will, I will upload another full in-depth uh, um, um, analysis for, for the frequency uh, uh, assignment and interference, but this is just meant to give you an idea of the process and and to to show you how we can interact with them with the live uh, live ACMA uh, database for frequency coordination purposes. Thank you. So my name is Yaya, and if you have any questions, 
please drop an email.